Welcome to part 5 of our Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design blog series. This video will introduce you to the electrical parts application. Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design Electrical Parts enables the creation and maintenance of a library of component parts, for example, connectors and wires. The package includes built in libraries with thousands of popular industrial parts with more parts added with each release. These component parts can be used in the designs created in Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design. The software supports the International Electrotechnical Commission, or IEC, and the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, symbol and parts libraries. Along with the Quick Start libraries, Users can download additional parts and symbols libraries from the Siemens support page. When you create component parts in the library, they must belong to component groups. Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design Electrical Parts provides a structure for logically grouping components of the same type, such as wires, connectors, devices, and so on. As you create and maintain components in the library, you will need to use codes. Codes are pre-configured lists of reusable component attributes, such as color, material, and so on, that can be selected when creating components. Let's have a look at the electrical parts application. You can start the electrical parts application from the Start menu or you can launch it from within the Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design applications. In the application, you'll notice the Components, Codes, and Company folders on the top left-hand side of the screen. The contents of these folders allows you to create and manage components, codes, and companies. I'll open the Component Maintenance dialog. This is the most commonly used dialog in the electrical parts application and is used to create and manage components. I can use this dialog to perform a part search. I'll type in the letter C and you'll notice a list of components beginning with the letter C appear. Now I'll add a hyphen question mark one after the C in the internal part number field. The list contents are reduced to reflect the components that start with the letter C and the hyphen followed by another character and then followed by the number 1. Next I'll enter a specific part number. In this case I'll use C-71332. Notice that the part is located and tabs appear across the top of the component details section allowing you to access all of the components details. As I go through these tabs, observe the variety of data that can be entered against this connector part. Notice that this is a connector as shown in the group name field. Also notice the component information listed in the components section, starting with the first three columns of part number, group name, and number of cavities. Let's close this dialog for now and I'll show you how to create a wire. I'll launch the component maintenance dialog again. To create a new wire, I'll click the new button. I'll enter in a new internal part name and I'll tell the system that I'm gonna be creating a wire. And then I'll hit create. I can then input all the specifications and attributes needed for this wire. The main information is entered in on the base tab. Notice that I can type the information in, or I can select it from a flyout menu. Notice that I am selecting some predefined codes for various attributes. Your company has complete control over creating and managing codes to meet your company specific needs. This process is only necessary if the wire does not already exist in your library. Once you've created this wire, you'll be able to share it with other users in your company. Once I've entered all the attributes and specifications, I can then go and add some supplier information. 
In this example, my supplier number is different than my internal part number. By doing this, I associate the two numbers with each other. Once all the information is complete, I simply apply it, and then I can close this dialog, and my wire is now part of the parts library. Next, I'll add a component, and again, I'll launch the component maintenance dialog. As before, I start by clicking on the new button and entering an internal part number. This particular component will be a connector, so I tell the system that I'm going to create a connector, and I click Create. As with the wire, I'll enter in all the attributes and specifications for this connector. The number of tabs that appear in the component details section as well as the number and type of attributes depends on which type of component you are creating. Although the attributes and tabs may differ in number, the method for entering in the information remains the same. Although I will not be showing it in this blog, if you do have to create your own custom codes or customer or supplier information, it is done in a similar way, just using a different dialog. The codes I'm using here were already defined in the Quick Start library that comes with the system. For this connector, I'm going to assign a customer part number. So you can have an internal part number, a customer part number, and a supplier part number, all for the same part. Once I've added the customer information, I'll add some supplier information. As with the custom codes, your company will have access to add their own supplier list and customer list to the electrical parts library. Once I've finished this, I simply hit apply and I can close the dialog and the connector is now in the parts library. So as you can see, the electrical parts library is very robust, but at the same time, very easy to work with. If you want to learn more about solid edge wiring and harness design, contact your account manager or visit us at www.designfusion.com. You can also call our head office toll free at one 888 567 3933